What's up, y'all? DIY once again. All right, let's get into it. I'm changing the, uh, first of all, this is 2005 Chevy Tahoe with a 5.3 Vortec. Um, been getting a bad reading on my coolant temp uh, inside the gate, uh, the gauge inside the vehicle. Um, it just sits flat. I just noticed it. Um, it was working one day and it seems like it wants to work and then it doesn't want to work, so we're going to change it. So the coolant temp sensor is located on the driver's side of the engine, right behind this battery post thing right here. It's kind of hard to see. Um, it's a little lower, right up under this. Uh, I'm gonna move this bracket right here. I'm gonna take this bracket off and I'll get back to that and show you a little bit more, but if I can put the camera down in there. Well, there it is, if you see the plug. And the wire sitting right above a uh, spark plug right there. Okay, so we're going to take off a few things and make it a little bit easier for me to maneuver. And get some tools down in there and take it off. Alright. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this engine cover. Um, probably don't really have to take that engine cover off. I'm going to take it off anyway. It's just an 8 millimeter, And I'm going to take off this breather box. Uh, right here too again these are all eight millimeters uh, and the reason why you do want to take off this engine cover because you want to take this breather box off in order to take this off this right here off you got to take this off to get to that clamp right there so let's go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll get to the location of the uh, coolant temp sensor all right okay now that I removed the uh, engine cover and I removed the uh, breather box okay um, got a lot of better a lot better view of what you're going to be looking at okay so next um, and again that's what the eight millimeter will take off the uh, breather box and the engine cover next I'm going to take off uh, I'm going to remove these two bolts that hold uh, this bracket on for where the uh, connector goes also um, since we're dealing with something electrical obviously you want to go ahead and we're gonna uh, disconnect this negative next, just so I don't forget before I start messing with electrical connectors and stuff. So let's go ahead and get that battery, uh, the negative post uh, taken off. Then we're gonna remove those two bolts right there just above the uh, power steering pump and move that bracket to the side so we can get to that coolant temp sensor a little easier. Okay, here's the deal. Is it easy to replace? Absolutely. So. After you get all this stuff out of the way, this is the challenge. You're gonna have to remove, like I said, those two brackets. We removed them with a 10 millimeter. Then you got a bunch of little hoses and stuff and wire harnesses that will definitely be in your way. If you wanna make it easier for you, you got to remove these out of your way. A little flat blade screwdriver and start removing some of these connectors or these clips so you can move these harnesses and stuff to get yourself some room. Cause GM, so you know they're geniuses right okay saying that's sarcastic but they got all these wires and you know you got to remove the the back of the uh the alternator harness or the alternator uh alternator plug or whatever this part right here you got to take this off the back of the alternator okay get that out of the way once you remove these two 10 millimeter bolts do whichever one in whatever order you want but you got to make yourself you got to give yourself some room and some clearance starting i got a bunch of plastic just breaking all over the place it's just the covers for the wires but anyway you got to give yourself some room here is the coolant temp sensor okay and after you get to it and unplug it you're going to want to remove the spark plug boot coming off the uh, coil all right, you gotta take this boot off. Cause if you don't, this thing will be soaked in antifreeze coolant. You don't wanna get that all soaked up and wet, okay? So remove this plug right here, spark plug, wire, okay? Uh, you got the first spark plug right under here. Uh, you can see it right below the sensor there it is see the spark plug tip that won't get that wet you want to put a towel over that then by all means go right ahead uh, I'm gonna place a towel over it because I don't want a bunch of coolant just getting all inside that either so I'm gonna put a towel over that 
Um, it's pretty easy to change, but the, the challenge is moving all these wires out the way. Once you get all these wires out of the way, make sure you get your coolant temp sensor connector. Get that out of the way too, because you don't want to get that all soaked up and doused in uh, coolant either. And once you do all that, then you can get to the, you got you some room to work with. So now let's go find the right size to take this bad boy out. Okay, y'all, so the size is a three-fourths, three-fourths socket. We're going to place it right. I put a little towel over the spark plug or whatever. You don't have to do it, but I did it just to eliminate some of the coolant that might spill or rush down. I'm not sure how much I'm going to lose. I got a little flashlight right here, but we'll see. All right, three-fourths is what we're going with. So let's put the three fourths on there and let's get that bad boy out of there. Yeah, so three fourths is the size. So we're going to take a three fourths socket, place it over that. I put the tile down in there. So we're going to take a three fourths socket and go ahead and get that up out of there real quick. Okay, got my little light. So we should be okay. So let's go ahead and loosen that bad boy on up. Okay, and as I'm sitting here turning it, it didn't take much to loosen it. It started loosening up right away. We're going to go slow because we know coolant is going to come out. This vehicle has been sitting all night, so I'm not worried about burning myself. I'm more or less wondering where all this antifreeze or how much is going to come out. I didn't take off the cap on the reservoir only because uh, I don't want to. I want to eliminate um, getting air into the system as much as possible. So, no, I didn't drain the radiator. I didn't do all that. I'm just trying to make this simple. I know I'm going to lose some coolant. Not sure how much. So let's see real quick. I'm going to do the rest by hand. And real quick, if you haven't yet, make sure you prepare your uh, your new one before you take the old one out. Only, you know, just to save yourself some time and less air uh, in the system. Have the, have the new one ready. I put a little... Uh, thread tape on it you probably don't have to um it didn't i didn't see on there where it said to but i just did it anyway um yeah just save yourself some time so go ahead and prepare that and have it ready have it sitting to the side so as soon as you fin as soon as you take out the old one you can slap this one in okay so we got that ready comes a little metal o-ring or whatever a little o-ring over it like that okay so just be ready to put that in I um, haven't taken this one all the way out yet. I kind of stopped and was like, you know what, let me get that prepared first. So once you got uh, those all done and that all in place, go ahead and start with this one. Or better yet, go ahead and continue or proceed to uh, removing the old one. Yeah, so that's it. We went ahead and put the new one in. Here's the old one, and it did have some thread tape on it, so I'm glad I added some. I was going to add some anyway, but that's good to know that it has some thread tape on it. So it definitely... Uh, Put your thread tape on there. All right. The old one looks bad too. New one was pretty easy. Went in pretty nice. Don't over tighten it. Do not over tighten it. Just get it nice and a little snug. You know, try to get it in the same position it was in that it came out. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and put the spark plug boot back on and put everything back together. But yeah, that's how you replace your coolant temp sensor. I'm going to show you the results afterwards. Um, and right, hopefully uh, this is a job well done. Let's get everything back together real quick. All right, so we're good. Temperature gauge is reading. I got the uh, cap on the reservoir. I got it off just so it can so it can bleed the system pretty much, get the air bubbles out of it, let the temp get to the normal reading. Uh, we'll go inside and check the temperature gauge. Like I said, it wasn't working. It was just sitting flat. And there we go. As you can see, it's reading at the normal temp, just below 210. Just sits there, and that's where it normally, that's where it's normally been for the last 10 years. Okay, so had this vehicle for 10 years, and pretty much know all about it. And, uh, we're gonna go ahead and cap this off. I might have put a little bit too much in there, but it's just uh, releasing some of the air bubbles, as you can see kind of bleeding the system kind of leave it off for a little bit see it's going down finally
I'm just gonna go ahead and put the cap on it. So yeah, um, I'm pretty satisfied overall. Pretty easy job. I say from a scale from one to 10, it's probably about a three or four. It's not hard. There's my new one, I don't know if you can see it, but everything's back together like Humpty Dumpty, man. So yeah, you can take it to a dealer, but screw that, this is DIY. We're gonna do it ourselves together. This is my first time doing a temp sensor on this one. Still bubbling a little bit. But yeah, man, you know, not hard. Thanks for being patient. But yeah, we, uh, we're pretty much done. Yeah, we could have drained the radiator, but I would have had a lot more air in the system. I didn't lose that much coolant. Still the air bubbles in there, but I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. Close this off. Yep. So now we back back in the game, baby. Back in the game. Alright. <laughs> 